All right, welcome back for another edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted, the program where you get to help make Calhoun County a better and safer place by helping us lock up the bad guys. I'm Chris Wright, and this is the guy that actually does the locking up, Sheriff Matthew Wade. Good to see you, Sheriff. It's always good to be back. I've been busy several weeks, had a lot going on, and uh, fighting crime and putting people in jail. So, well, Good to have you back here with a few minutes on the, the TV show. Uh, let's talk about what our viewers have done. they got uh, some more arrests for us. They have. They've got four arrests this week. Um, Always thankful for your help, and uh, we, we're just thankful that uh, you're willing to help us out. We couldn't do it without you. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about this uh, This weekend. We've got an event coming up. This, actually, the reason I'm wearing purple, I've got my purple tie, and this shirt is just a little bit purple on it. Purple is the official color of the Relay for Life, and the Calhoun County Relay for Life is happening this weekend. You know, Relay for Life is such a, a wonderful event. It gives people hope, and that's part of their, their slogan. Uh, I lost my brother-in-law this past year to uh, cancer, and it's just a terrible thing. He was 46. So uh, finding a cure is something that I hope we can find. It's a terrible, awful thing that happens to too many people, and um, the Relay for Life event raises money for that. And it's also a great place that people come together and, and seem to have a little bit of healing and, uh, and re-energizing and, and gives them that hope to keep on. So. There's definitely a wide range of emotions throughout the uh, the evening. And it's going to be a little bit different this year. Uh, we've always had the Relay for Life starting on a, a Friday and then going into early hours of Saturday morning. But uh, this year we're going to put it on the Saturday instead of Friday. So And it's also going to be at a new location. We're going to be up in Jacksonville this year. So make sure you know where and when you're going. Yeah, it's been, it's, it's, you know, it was at Oxford for many years in McClellan and back to Oxford and Jacksonville's a good location for it as well. So wonderful mm -hmm. city and their, uh, their uh, facilities are very nice as well. But um, I will be there playing the bagpipes again. It's That'll an honor, great. you know, it's something that um, it's kind of a ministry for me that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's an honor to get to play for those people in the memory of those that uh, have fought that terrible yeah, disease. It's a really nice touch to the evening. There's, sure. there's something, just nothing quite like the bagpipes. It's it's a unique sound and, unique and gives it a, a different feel and adds a lot to the uh, the evening. So we appreciate you doing that. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the first half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. All right, let's get started on this week's lineup. If you have information about anyone in this lineup, please contact Calhoun County Crime Stoppers at 256-238-1414. Uh, we're starting with Daniel Higginbotham of Lincoln. He is wanted on a failure to appear warrant for possession of marijuana, first degree. Nicholas Turley of Lincoln is wanted on a probation violation for theft of property, first degree. Christopher Flowler of Lincoln wanted on a probation revocation for possession of a controlled substance. James Heath of Talladega wanted on a failure to appear warrant for possession of a controlled substance. Jonathan Cousin of Russellville is wanted on a probation violation, obstructing justice using a false ID. Erica Downer of Talladega wanted on a probation violation for theft of property, fourth degree. And Amber Laminack of Fruithurst wanted for possession of a controlled substance and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. Again, if you have any information about these cases, please call Calhoun County Crime Stoppers at 256-238-1414. We want your information, not your name, and you could get a cash reward of up to $1,000. All right, we'll have the second half of this week's lineup coming up in just a little bit. But, uh, you know, Sheriff, it, it's very common for me to share a set here at TV24 with a Stedham. That's right. <laughs> Usually it's Mike Stedham. But uh, today we've got his better half with us, Brenda Stedham. Good to see you, Brenda. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. Appreciate this opportunity. Really well, we appreciate all the work that you've put in over the last several years in trying to help out the issues with mental health in our community. We've got the Out of the Shadows Summit coming around again. I guess this is the third year, right? Yes, that's right. It's, right. it's, it's Friday, May the 10th from 8 until 4 at the Oxford Civic Center. And it's a group uh, thing. I can't take credit for it. We have a brilliant committee that works really hard for almost a year to get it ready. Yeah, people don't realize sometimes how much work does go in for how long of a time to right. put something like this together. It really is 
a major investment of time and, and, and resources from the, the people that, uh, that put it on. Right. But we're seeing a lot of good results from that. Aren't Absolutely. We? Uh, the counselors and social workers and nurses that do the evaluations for their credit uh, just love it. They say it's the best one they've ever been to. We have uh, high quality speakers. We have 14 different speakers. This time we'll have four programs going at a time in three different time periods, and we have a nationally known speaker as our keynote speaker. Her name is Carol Kivlar, K-I-V-L-A-R, and you can Google it. She, uh, she is going to talk about, will I ever be the same again? She suffered from mental illness and went through every treatment known to man, and uh, she finally decided, I'm going to have to be a participant in my treatment, and she has written a book uh, using all the letters of the alphabet, and she has a, something for you to do based on each one of those uh, parts of the alphabet, like W is walk and whatever, T is talk to a friend, uh, and it's a great little booklet. We're going to put it in, in the bags of everyone who comes. So Very practical excited. information. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Sheriff, I know mental illness is something that's very important to you. Uh, not only do you personally care about it, but professionally, our jails kind of become a de facto mental hospital in a way. Unfortunately, they do. Um, you know, I hate that that happens. And, and you know, mental illness is a, it's an illness like cancer. But the difference between cancer and mental illness is people who get cancer, it doesn't affect what they think or how they think where mental illness does. And a lot of times people that are good people will do things uh, criminally or otherwise that affects others because they're mentally ill, and, and that's right. something that affects all of us, so we, we need to do something about it. We need to take it more serious in, in our legislative group and, and provide uh, more money for this because it does affect other people, and jail's not the place for them. We need to be catching them before they get so off that they're committing these crimes, and mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's really, um, it's something I believe in, something that I haven't told anybody until just now is we're partnered with JSU and we're now going to have a, gra a graduate student come every semester. We're going to have two graduate students come every semester and they're going to assess every person that comes in and out of our jail. So every person that comes in the Calhoun County Jail is going to be assessed by a graduate level counselor and that person is going to try to find them resources even for when they get out of jail. So that's we'll, huge. That's that huge. Is huge. And, and we're doing this through JSU mm -hmm. and, um, and, and it's really a very cost effective thing. These people that are coming, they're graduate students, we're going to give them a stipend and that stipend is going to be $3,000. Wow. So it's going to cost us very little mm -hmm. to provide services to, we book in our jail between six and 800 people a month. So right. you're looking at what, 24,000 people a year? And they'll they'll right. earn a little bit of money, right. they'll get some good practical experience and the right. individuals who get properly identified because of this who knows how many closed doors it can open for them. Exactly, exactly. There are many resources available, but people don't know about them. People don't talk about mental illness. If you want to quiet a crowd, walk into a room and say the words mental illness, <laughs> and it, you just don't get any response. But every one of us has dealt with mental illness in one way or another, whether it's a family member or a friend or a neighbor or the child of our best friend or whoever it is. And as Sheriff said, it's a really bad problem because most of the time people with mental illness will try to self-medicate and they'll mm -hmm. use drugs or alcohol, which just makes it worse. So we'll have a speaker on co-occurring illnesses at this program as well. Not only does it make it worse, it also makes it more difficult for friends and relatives to spot what the real problem right. is. It, that's exactly right. It makes right. it harder for the practitioners, the doctors, and the counselors to be able to identify if it's a mental illness or a drug habit, and a lot mm -hmm. of times it's both. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. But you know, uh, the VA has the best co-occurring uh, mental illness uh, treatment program. Uh, when I was working with the Veterans Treatment Court, we would send people over there, and those folks know how to d determine which is which and how to work with both. And that's a crucial thing, and it's very rare. All right, we need to take rare. a quick break. Let's take a break. We'll be right back in just a second. And we're going to talk more about the specifics of the event that's coming up here in uh, May. 
and uh, see if you might want to get involved with the Out of the Shadows Summit when we come back here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And now the second half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Matthew Waits of Talladega is wanted on a failure to appear warrant for possession of marijuana, second degree. Carrie Seward of Lincoln wanted on a failure to appear warrant for possession of a controlled substance and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. Anthony Howard of Oxford wanted for failure to pay for theft of property, second degree, and unauthorized use of a vehicle, use and possession of drug paraphernalia. Frederick Bishop of Lineville is wanted on a probation violation for certain person forbidden to possess a pistol. Cheryl Foshi of Oxford wanted on a probation violation for possession of a controlled substance. Nancy Adams of Alexandria wanted for failure to appear for negotiating with a non-negotiable instrument, better known as passing bad checks. If you have any information about these cases, please call Calhoun County Crime Stoppers at 256-238-1414. All right, we'll have the Crime Stoppers segment of the show here in just a few minutes. Talk about some unsolved property crimes that maybe you can help us with. We'll also have our crazy criminal of the week, Sheriff. But uh, right now, we're talking with Brenda Stedham about the Out of the Shadows Summit. And of course, the, the name Out of the Shadows, we're talking about mental illness and so often our mental illness issues stay in the shadows and we need to bring those right. out. We need to talk about those things so that they don't get worse. We can make them better. Right. And so that people will feel comfortable and supported when they need help so they can talk to others. You know, any kind of problem you have that you hold down in, inside you and pack it down, it just gets worse. And oftentimes it, you blow up. Mm -hmm. I mean, you deal with that all the time, Sheriff. But I didn't know who told you yeah. that I did, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, you know, making a joke, but but yes, it does. Right. And we, I see it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm a person just like anybody else, and and so is the people that do law enforcement. And you know, you see right. those guys and girls that uh, that uh, go through that, and you know, trying to find help for just them. Right. It's tough. You know, right. It's, it's so. Cool. Let's talk about the, the specifics of the uh, the summit here. I, I know you've got some really great speakers. Yes, yes. Besides the keynote speaker, we have Chris Dendy, who is a regionally known um, ADHD expert, and we're mm -hmm. really fortunate to have her coming because that's a really uh, prevalent uh, so, problem. So, what's the difference between ADD and ADHD? Well, Sheriff, it's I'm not spot, I'm, I'm not an expert, but I'll tell you this: uh, one of them. Uh, means that the person is more active. You know, you'll see a, a little boy running, you go to a family reunion and all you see is a street going back and forth. That's not necessarily a mental illness, but that's the hyper part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if a person has ADHD, that's a sign that there might be a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is not quite so active, but there's something going on in the brain that interferes with the learning process. But they're, they're closely related. One of the things that we always get into when we start talking about mental illness is the, the subject that's really tough to talk about, and that is suicide. I've, I've noticed where lately they've been trying to change the, the way the dialogue goes on that. Um, and instead of saying someone committed suicide, we're trying to say that someone was a victim of suicide. Correct. And just the way you phrase that, I think, helps change the mindset a little bit. Absolutely. People who don't have mental illness or are not mental health uh, experts don't understand how anybody could become a victim of suicide. But what happens, my expert friends tell me, is that they get so down that they think their families would be better off without them. Mm -hmm. And that's hard for us to understand. We've not felt that way. But so when they're in that deep, deep, dark recess, and they're not talking about it and they're not seeking help, that's when suicide happens. And there are going to be some people at the, uh, the summit that know a lot about this. That's exactly right. One of the things I'm really excited about in terms of removing the stigma is that we're going to have a panel of five or six uh, family members who lost uh, a family member uh, to suicide. And for them to be willing to come out and talk about that to a group of people I think is huge, but I also think it's going to help all the experts, the, the professionals who will be with us to learn more about how that 
works and how it affects them uh, so that they can deal with the folks they deal with all the time. But also, we want local folks who are just interested in the issue or who have family members or relatives uh, who, who have mental illness to come. And I think it's going to be one of the most powerful programs we'll have all day. You know, we, it's not uncommon for us to um, get a report of a suicide once or twice a week that we, oh. that we respond to. And um, it's mm. one of the hardest things for any family member to accept. Right. You know, it's such a it's such a pain, and, and it, I'm not explaining it well, but these families they just they don't get any answers, and it's just it's right. just hard for them. So. And they don't understand, and then they feel guilty. You know, first thing they think, and and the reason I I say this not because I don't really know, but. Uh, when I lost my friend to suicide, I thought, coulda, shoulda, woulda, what could I have done to prevent it? Mm -hmm. And, but my friends who are experts say there was nothing I could have done, mm -hmm. you know, so, but the families suffer. And you know, the first person they go to is their pastor. So we're going to have a panel of pastors this year yeah. too, to talk about well. it. And real quickly, one other thing that I, I know you're going to be addressing is PTSD. Right. Right. We have two guys from the VA, Stephen Johnson and Roy White, who are going to come and talk about understanding PTSD. We have so many folks who are coming from the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, and we don't understand them. They come home, they've been big members of the church. They sit at the back of the church, and people think, well, he's crazy. No, he doesn't want anybody to, sh to come up on him that he doesn't know about. You know, mm -hmm. they'll be driving down the road, and a, and a Walmart bag will go across the road, and they'll to just get scared to death because they think it's an IED. Yeah. They walk in here and they look under everything because they're afraid there'll be an IED. So we need to understand PTSD so that we can help them and not react like, oh, you're crazy. Right. You know? so. I think we have some information we can put up on the screen about this as well. Uh, there you go, the Oxford Civic Center, Friday, May the 10th for the Out of the Shadows Summit. It's going to be going on from 8 o'clock in the morning till 4.30. If they can't be there all day, they can still come and get something. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And professionals will pay $50 if they register in advance. They'll pay $60 if they show up the, on the day of. Uh, family members and consumers can pay $5, and they, everybody gets a free lunch and snacks. Very good. All right. Well, Brenda, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I really yes, appreciate it. Yes, all right. And we'll be back in just a moment. We'll have the Crime Stopper segment of the show and our Crazy Criminal of the Week on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And now for the Crime Stoppers segment of the show. We've got some property crimes that we would appreciate your help solving. On April 28th, the report was filed for theft of property near Memory Lane in Ohatchee. Items stolen included a Honda self-propelled mower, John Deere edger, four kitchen chairs, multi-yard tools, and lumber. Between April 27th and April 28th, a red 1998 Ford Explorer SUV was stolen from a residence on Jamback Road in Anniston. And between April 14th and April 28th, someone broke into a camper and a truck on Wellington Road in Wellington. Stolen were two TVs, two DVD players, and assorted clothing. If you have information, please call Calhoun County Crime Stoppers at 256-238-1414. Stupid! You're so stupid! Uh, Sheriff, of course, one of the things that people try to do when they commit crimes is hide their identity. Yep, that and happens. In this case, we've got uh, an individual who put a uh, shopping bag over his head when he was uh, robbing a convenience store. Unfortunately for him, you can't see out of the shopping bag. You take it off to put so, it. Yeah, he lifts it up while he's up there at the register. And then he's got some items that he's not just taking the cash. He wants the, the guy to give him some items as well. So what does he do? How am I going to carry these items? Oh, I've got a bag. <laughs> he takes the bag off his head. So. You know, and I say this all the time, people, you know, people who commit crimes aren't necessarily stupid. They make bad choices, but sometimes they are stupid. Yes, and, and in this case, you know, this is not a crazy criminal. This is a stupid criminal. So, yes, it is. Know. But uh, we appreciate you doing stupid things like this. It helps. That. Yeah. We appreciate that. Yeah. We, it, you know, we take all the help we can get. All right. Well, that's all the time that we've got for this week. We'll be looking for you again next week, but hopefully not in the lineup or with a shopping bag over your head on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.